show you some of the favorite altcoins that I like and where we are right now. Um, I think I'll start with some of the, the bigger ones or the ones that I personally like and then I'll go into the list that was given to me by the subscribers. So I'll give you my uh, uh, ideas real time. I don't know much about a lot of these charts, uh, some of them, um, so I'm just going to read it raw right off the top of the top of my head. Um, uh, so first I'm going to start with Avalanche, which is one of my favorites, uh, besides Solana, I guess. Uh, this is one of my faves that I've talked about in the past. And you can see where we went. We went all the way from here around the $10, $11 and under. It went all the way down to 8 around here. And from this here, from around 11 to 8 it was a fantastic buy. And then we had the move that went all the way up to around 50 now, uh, which has been great. I don't see any real resistance still on this. I think it still has higher to go. But for the short term, it, it's going to probably pull back to the $20 range uh, here, back to this blue area right here to become into the buy area again. Let's do it as a four hour. And you can see that more clearly on this chart. So you can see the move that we've had. It's been fantastic from here all the way up to 50. I don't have to tell you how well we've done. Um, now let's go to Solana. And Solana had a huge move, went all the way to the mid 120 range, created this divergence all the way down to the 68. I think we'll get, with Bitcoin pulling back, we'll get drops down to here. Um, this was a buy from a long time ago when it went to around 14, uh, 1410, I think was the key level. Let's get back to the uh, daily. Yeah, so this break that you had right down here was a signaler. Um, as well, let's go to GOEV. Uh, so you see Solana um, looking for pullback, but you see where it was a buy. That was an extremely great move that it had. And notice this right here. This type of move down, da, 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 then this big drop here. Now that reminds me of what? It reminds me of this right here, um, of this uh, canoe that I bought. Now again, this is only a few percentages for me, but it's a high risk trade and you know what I'm looking for on it. There's nothing for me to talk about. In the future, if we get this move all the way back up to the $1.40 range or higher, don't be surprised. Um, this has a similar chart to what you saw when I was showing you previously over, you know, uh, what happened over there. Uh, let's see. With this right here, stir drop, da, 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 not as much of a lift, but it had this kind of um, scalloped like pattern of where the rolling, rolling down, but that, that's a big indicator of a buy. And um, this has the same thing going on it with uh, Canoe. Um, and then scalloped on down here where it rolls and then whoosh goes down here. Um, now, uh, it, it might collapse. It might not ever come back. But that's part of the game when you go with high-risk trades. All I need is one out of a few. Uh, one out of, uh, if I get a 10 times or my money on a, on a trade like this or five times or something. I just need one out of five or ten to, to work out, so to break even. So I've had many of these in the past and they've returned much more than I've lost. I actually have a higher win percentage than I do of a losing percentage. And even if I was at one out of five or 50%, let's say. So if I would, I'm 90% um, on these or greater than 90%, I should say. Uh, I'm going to be doing very well. So I don't go around thinking about, oh my God, what's going to happen? Uh, is it the end of the world on these? No, I let them ride. Of course, I also on high risk plays don't put in a large percentage. It's not like my Bitcoin holdings. <laughs> I'm not going to put a large percentage of my uh, portfolio or my trading money into uh, a high risk play. It would just be silly. 
Um, but that's where we are, and uh, we had the big drop here. And I know some people are freaked out about it, but it doesn't mean anything to me. I can't do emotions. I'm sorry. And you know what I'm looking for, and it's not changed. My minimum target's right up there. I want that 140, $1.40 range. And other than that, I'm not interested. I could go down, 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 and then uh, at some point it's going to pop back up, in my opinion. And from what I've seen in the past, it does this the majority of the time. And I'm not worried about it. Um, but again, I don't have a great deal of risk on it. All right, so let's go to uh, the list of ones that were requested to me by subscribers. And here we are. We'll start with Theta. Now, Theta, I remember from a long time ago because I actually talked about this and a range, and I'm going to show you the range of it. Let's go to a weekly. You can see it better. And it has two buy areas. It had right down here in the $1 range and all the way down here in the uh, 65 cent range. Um, so this was its, here's its plateau right there. It's actually closer to 60 cents that it should be, but this was the zone of which you would want to buy. We're way under the 180, um, eight, I'm, I'm sorry, the 88.6% level, which is all the way back in 183. So at some point I'm gonna look, and you can see the spike up that we had here to the 140s. Um, I would look for numbers to get all the way back up to here. Um, I remember this from a long time ago because it was a great sell. Here we go, all the way up to here when it was in the $14 range. I said, this sucker is going to crash, and guess what it did? Sure enough, it was super overbought in a very short period of time, and it did crash. And uh, that was a great sell up here. And just like I think it's a great buy down here to or to get back to the $4 range, I would not be surprised at all, and I would look for numbers to get all the way back up to here. And let's put a line over here. Mm -hmm. Let's put that out over there. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say is your minimum target on this right there. Right around the mid $4 range. And even in the upper three up here makes sense, but around there, the four. So the upper three to the mid $4 range, that makes the most sense on it. So that's what I would look for for that when it does decide to uh, bounce back. And I think it has a very good chance of doing that. Um, the volume has reversed uh, since October. So it's building and we'll see what happens with it. But that's what I would look on for that. Now RSR. I don't know what RSR is, but let's look at the chart. Well, this one's consolidated. And it had a volume reversal back in September here. Um, so this is interesting. It looks like it's getting ready to do something. That's an interesting one. I'll have to go do more research on it. But right here, from this level right here around the 30 cent range, um, which we're at the 23 cent range right now, um, I would look for numbers that go all the way back up to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's not even, it's 0 0.2. So uh, we are like, we're on, we're on, this is a real small uh, numbers one. And it had, some, okay, so we're, uh, this goes in the set range. Uh, so the set range numbers that you have up here um, to get to one cent and on you have to go over and you're in a subset range of a sense. Um, I would look for numbers that go all the way back up to around two to three cents right up here or right up to here. It's not even, it's around two and a half cents, let's say. So I would look for a move that gets back up to these levels in the future. I like the volume on it. It's inclining and it reversed back in September here. So that's a good sign. And it's built up. It's had a really long time to do it. So if I was looking for it, and again, I don't know much about it, I would look for numbers that go all the way back up to here. So on a percentage basis, that's pretty good. Um, that's, that's fantastic, actually. 
And even if it just got to one cent from where you are right now, you know, four times uh, at the very minimum, um, which is you got your high right here and you got one high here. Uh, this one sticks out uh, because of this was a bit low area over here. Um, and this one right here sticks out as well. So I would say that the one to three cent range would not be impossible for it on in the future, which on a percentage basis, I don't have to tell you, is going to be four to uh, you know ten times, uh, four to uh, eight, seven, eight times the, your money back on it. So there you go on that one. Now let's go to STG and STG. Um, this chart, eh, I'm not so positive on it. It also has a very short, uh, it doesn't have a long lifespan and a lot of volatility. Don't like the volume so much. You did get also a volume reversal here back in October uh, and you bounced back up. But on a range basis for what this range is, not interested. Uh, I do not see any real gravitas. Don't know anything about the token itself, but don't like it. Not interested. All right, the next one we have is uh, the ZRX. Now, ZRX right here, this has much more interesting volume, but it's, again, the range is somewhat, well, it's not bad. On a percentage basis, that's not a bad range. And... I could see it getting all the way back up to the uh, $1.20 to $0.17 cent range up here, 19 17 somewhere in this area up here. I could see it getting back up to. Um, but I look at what goes on back here in $0.30, cent, 19 eh. Uh, it's very, the volume shifts. You get these temperamental spikes. I don't know how liquid this is as far as the token goes. So I'd be a little bit hesitant, but I kind of remember this ZRX, the OX, uh, and um, what are the number of exchanges that it actually trades on? That might be another issue. It's a DeFi play, if I remember correctly. Um, anyway, uh, not as uninteresting as STG, more interesting, but I don't really know what it future uh, it holds, and it's kind of I would think of it as being kind of a risky play, from what I can see. Now let's look at ARB, ARB. Okay, um, it goes all the way down to under eighty cents, creates this nice uh, geometric pattern right here, down up. Uh, down so creates a one two three and then reverses creates a one two three here reverses again back up look at the spike that goes all the way up to the 242 cent range i like the volume i like the way it curves um, on less volume it has greater range that's a good sign uh, for future things this is again a very young token um so this is from uh April of last year, March, April of last year. So uh, I don't know much about it. I like the volume and I like the, ge the uh, geomic, uh, geometric, I don't know, my brain's uh, going on me, uh, movement in here. But that could be uh, because it's very much controlled. I, I, I can't say, but I do like the volume on it and I like the way it moves. So that's kind of interesting of a play. Uh, I would say if it pulls back to the 135, I would be interested in it and then look for numbers that go way beyond where we are. Um, kind of like the one that I was telling the SUI, I would look for higher numbers going out in the future on it, as well as this would not be just a retracement play. This would be one I would be looking for new highs that go forward. And probably um, on a percentage basis, the four upper four dollar range. Let me see. Maybe uh, four. Da, da, da. 
uh, yeah, the three mid three to four dollar range would be the first area that I would look for um, going out in the future on it. Um, so that's ARB. I liked how it moves. Uh, its geometry and the, the shape of it with the volume is very good. That's all I'm going to say. And I would look for higher highs and in, out in, into the future in that three mid three to four dollar range. Um, the next one is MLT. MLT. Uh, know nothing about it, but it is active and it's kind of interesting. Uh, but again, the the shape and the volume, this is like kind of herky-jerky. This could be like one of those um, limited exchange traded ones. So uh, I like the way the volume moves. I can see pattern-wise you get a pretty decent range, but it's nothing spectacular. I don't know what holds out for the future on this one. Um, kind of, I would consider it high risk and I would not be interested in trading this media license token, licensing token. I don't know anything about it, uh, so I can't give you much in the way. It's, uh, it's got from 22, so it has a decent amount of history. It doesn't have an extreme uh, off the five cent range all the way up to 30 cents. It's pretty decent as far as on a percentage basis, but it's kind of really... Um, wonder how tight that is to actually trade it uh, and you're dealing with something that trades in the penny range um, could be might might be illiquid depending on what exchange you're on um, so keep that in mind yeah not something I would be interested in all right the next one CRV uh, look at this one this is an interesting range an interesting movement do, 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 do. Very spiky though. Again, another one that uh, it has better volume, but very spiky. I wonder, you know, who has control of this one? Um, look at these wicks on it. They stick out a lot uh, compared to the main body. So it's not super liquid. Um, big amount of volume right here. And then the volume's downshifted, and it's pretty much since September has just been a flat line. So, again, not something I would be super interested in. I would look for numbers that go all the way, if it does move in the future, all the way to the $2.70 range would be what my target would be on this. This is your midpoint right here, uh, $2.70. So if it gets the move, I would look for that. But... Again, I'm not, I wouldn't be a super fan of this. It looks kind of, um, it doesn't, it looks like it has a lot of uh, electronic market making type of uh, movement. And uh, you can tell because of all the spikes that are going up and down. So it's artificial in a sense. And that kind of uh, dissuades me from being interested in it, if you know what I mean. Because look at this, and then I got a fantasy spike all the way up to the $20 range. And that's silly. So it looks very manipulated. Not something I would be super interested in. Uh, uh, yeah, um, that's basically it. Um, the one I do really like is this one right here that's pulling back. And <laughs> I love the volume. I got to tell you, I love the volume on this one. And it created divergence up here and had a big pullback um, I think this one is gonna have a great future uh, SUI uh, I the amount of interest in it is pretty nice the way it moves and it looks real it's not artificial uh, this there's a lot of interest in this and different parties trading it you can tell when you uh, I explored the volume a little bit on this and um, so this one's very interesting uh, big pullback, and I would look for higher highs above this spike point up here, and to get to that three to four dollar range up here um, would be the first, and then numbers that maybe go all the way back up to eight dollars. So there you go. That's one of the ones I like the chart of. Um, it's interesting. Let's just put it that way.
um, besides my favorites, which are your here, your Avalanche and Sol Solana, um, but they've already had big moves from the past. Uh, when people asked about them, uh, uh, how long has it been since the beginning of la last year, uh, even earlier? It was like, uh, yeah, it was like early last year, I think like in January or so. Um, but it's had its move. And even the end of 22, this was, uh, I was asked about this. I remember that 14, 10, 14 uh, dollar range down here. Um, and it, again, look at the pattern, do, 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 spike down, and then creates a scalloped pattern that goes down here, rolls over. Um, that's a good sign of a bottoming. And like I, I noted, guess what has that now? And here it goes, it's scalloped down over here, kind of like rolls, think of a, uh, a Nautilus roll. And uh, that's what this uh, uh, canoe has done. So. Again, nothing for me to do on that one until up to here. I won't even look at it. I don't even have to talk about it. I'm only doing it because people get apprehensive. <laughs> Would I buy more? Well, I've got a limit. If I get up to 5% on it, yeah, I could put more in, but my limit is 5% on any on any uh, high-risk trade. Remember that. Uh, I could go more into it. I, I kind of think this is going to have a really nice bounce at some point. And this could very well be the, the low point of this, the end point. Or it could just collapse in the end of story and just fades away. And you know what? I'm not going to feel any different about it if it collapses or if it doesn't or if it goes all the way back up to here. I will feel exactly emotionally the same about it if it disappears or goes to target. So do you understand? It's not emotional with me. This is all math, basically. And the only thing I care about is trying to come up with the best math and, and uh, you know, solutions that I can. So there you go. Here are your uh, different plays. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Uh, I'll talk about Link real fast. Link has had its move. I had someone ask me about that. It got really close to the min target on here in around the $18 range. Um, this was one from way back in the day. This was when it was trading all the way down to uh, the over here uh, around the $5 range, the mid $5 range. And it's been well under, it had buys all the way at $5.80. Now it's had a big run up almost up to the mid target of um, 18. So Chainlink has always had a great deal of um, range. Uh, it had this pattern over here back in the day and I said it's going to go all the way back down to here and a lot of people did not believe me they said we're new highs we're going higher and you know well guess what guess what the pattern wins uh, it took its time but it made its way all the way down to here and sure enough trades back up to above here and here's your minimum target um, and it's done everything that it should and it doesn't matter what I think or what I want or what the time but back in the day I was a few people got really upset that I went over and said this was going to drop and um, but the pattern doesn't care and when it does it it does it it doesn't care and it went all the way down there so that's like anyway those were the different uh, trades I don't think I missed anything if I did let me know. I'm gonna. I'll be around the whole week. Uh, I'm gonna do my next video probably tomorrow again, because um, <laughs> uh, I, I I'm backed up. I did get uh, because of family. I just had too many people over this last week, because <laughs> uh, everybody's traveling. It's the weather's uh, nice for them to do so. Um, anyway, uh, let me know it, which other ones you want. Uh, and if I don't get them in the next video, I'll get them in the video after that. And I'll be around. You guys have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.